Elaine Pascal is the author of The Blood Lights, If Nothing Else, Eve, We've Enjoyed the Fruit, and The Thin Contract. She is also the editor of Dancing in the Shadows, a tribute to Anne Rice. Her writing can be found in numerous anthologies and magazines. Over to you, Elaine. Thank you very much. From one name to another. The beginning of part two of the Bloodlights, the chapter I selected can serve as a standalone story. At this point in the Bloodlights, women and girls have been affected by the lights, which gives them zombie-like characteristics. Part two, Caitlin, Sing the Beasts Away. October 19, 2021, the girl is screaming. She's screaming and running, but no sound can be heard. She's in a dark place, both literally and metaphorically, and she does not understand either. She believes she blacked out. She does not remember crawling into this gloomy space, yet the stinging pain coming from her knees and palms narrates an experience of crawling. The smell where she's located is indescribably bad, but it does nothing to staunch her hunger. She wishes she had left her father's laptop alone. More than that, she wishes she had not sent the video to Molly. She'd instructed Molly not to watch it, just to keep it as evidence for if something bad happened to her, for when something bad happened to her. She trusted Molly, but she knew that curiosity killed the cat. She knew that now more than ever. Without the video, she would have never entered a dark place alone. She had always been too afraid. She'd spent most of her life fearing imaginary creatures like vampires and ghosts. She had mostly feared the gunny wolf. Just imagining his empty eyes and long teeth had been enough to put her in tears as a child. As a little girl, she had practiced her lullabies as a means of putting the dreaded beast to sleep. Her mother had taught her the sweetest songs, ones that had carried her to safe dreams as a small child. Without the video, she would not be where she was. She would not fear what she now feared. She could not explain with any satisfaction why she'd even watched it to spite her parents, to further anger her already angry father, to further guilt her already guilty mother. She'd watched the video, she'd seen the lights. Then her throat had begun to feel thick and itchy, a deeply pervasive itch that could not be scratched because there was no way to scratch the air inside of her mouth and windpipe. The itch was accompanied by an insane hunger. Caitlin had gone to the living room sofa where her mother sat watching Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune or one of those game shows that makes the viewers at home feel superior to the sacrificial lambs, sweating it out under lights in front of cameras in the hopes of small temporary windfalls. Oh, how lights can change the world. Caitlin had begun complaining to her mother about the throat itchiness, the eye puffiness and the lip tinginess. She'd whined about being so very hungry. Her mother had pretended not to hear and had sipped her martini and stared at the show with a staged intensity. During the commercial, Caitlin had tried again. She gasped out to her mother that she could no longer swallow, that it was becoming difficult to breathe, that she would take herself to the hospital if she had her license and were not afraid of blacking out on the way. Must it always be about you, her mother snapped, still refusing to look at her swollen and distressed child. I had a very long day, came home, cooked supper, and started the laundry, and now I just want to sit for a few minutes. She took another sip of the quickly dwindling drink. Selfish, she muttered. Selfish? Yes, Caitlin had been selfish for wanting a specific type of cake for her sixth birthday. She'd been selfish for wanting her mom to open the present Caitlin had made for Christmas first. She'd been selfish for wanting her mom to attend her school concert in which Caitlin had a solo. But she had not been nearly as selfish as the parent who put the bottle before her child's needs. Caitlin had sprung from the couch, not so much from her mother's words, as from the fact that her entire body had been burning with hives. She ran outside into the darkness, only to find herself, sometime later, making her way through the dank tunnels beneath her hometown. October 24, 2021, the girl is crying. She's crying, but because she's nearly dehydrated, no tears fall. She's dehydrated because she can keep no food or liquid down. Her mother tried bringing soup to the shed where she is kept. It is safer for everyone if she is contained. Her mother tried bringing her calamine for the itchy boils, but nothing can stop the itching or the hunger. When Caitlin had returned home, she overheard her parents arguing. 
How could you have brought that into our home? Her mother's voice was soft from crying. It's bad enough you're on that island. We didn't know this would happen. You mean, Rick, that you didn't know there'd be tourists. You did know that people lived there. You did know they would be affected. Her father had said nothing. But then you brought it home. You brought it into our home, those damn lights. And now, Caitlin, her father had not been able to defend himself. He could not argue in favor of the existence of the video, so her mother had thrown him out. For the first time, Caitlin had realized that her mother was not as weak as her father. She'd been wrong. Her mother had a blunt strength, especially when she was sober. This realization had allowed Caitlin to put herself in her mother's care in the dark tool shed. At times, the few items that remained in the shed cast menacing shadows. Caitlin would sing lullabies to those darkened illusions, hoping to sing any phantom beast to sleep. The hunger grew and her mother decided that soup was not the answer. The woman began bringing raw meat into the shed. While disgusted by the prospect, the meat smelled wonderful. They soon learned that she could not digest the meat, but could swallow any blood she was able to squeeze from it. What Caitlin craves is something warm and alive, something to hunt, something that'll tug against her. She finds herself salivating when her loyal dog is sniffing at the shed. She finds herself wanting to lure him inside, wanting to pet him until he falls asleep. And then her mother seems to understand. The yard is littered with creatures brought in from shelters. At night, Caitlin's released and allowed to hunt. At first, the animals seem to satisfy. The boils become smaller and she's able to focus on things beyond her hunger. After some time, her hunger evolves. The animals cannot keep up with her demands. Even the rabbits that have been multiplying like rabbits were not enough. October 30, 2021, the woman is singing. She's singing as she walks into the yard she knows so well. For decades, she's hung laundry in that yard, played with her daughter in that yard, sunbathed and gardened. It was a place of contentment until it became a place of confinement. This time she could not hide behind a bottle. She could not hide at all. So she sings. She sings as she opens the door to the shed and unleashes the girl she barely recognizes but still loves so terrifyingly. She sings as she walks into the girl's arms, understanding fully that she would never be able to sing this particular beast to sleep. Thank you.